Gold hit a 14-month high on the back of dovish central bank expectations. The European Central Bank suggesting there could be an accommodative shift in policy ahead, while the market is now expecting around two rate cuts from the Fed in 2019. Joining me to discuss is Serge Berger, head trader and investment strategist at the SteadyTrader.com, who's in Zurich. Serge, good to see you as always. Um, let's start with gold, because I wanted to ask you how much of that sort of positive price action that we've been seeing is around expectations of a weaker dollar, and how much of it is about potential risk aversion? Hey, Victoria, it's an interesting observation. If you actually look at the correlation of the past, say, 10 days of gold versus the dollar, it's more or less been one, uh, which is not very typical. You don't see gold and the dollar uh, and actually all the other risk, uh, risk and risk uh, and non-risk assets actually move up together. Um, ultimately, what we're seeing uh, from a sort of structural perspective is is that the, all, all, all signs here are really pointing to gold to move further to the upside. We've already seen some price appreciation year to date. And um, if there's one thing that I've learned over the past 20 years as a trader investor, when it comes around to gold, what gold likes is environments where both growth and inflation expectations are slowing. And that's really exactly where we are right now. Now, if we look at the chart, I pulled up their popular, popular GLD ETF. You can also look at the futures. The chart obviously looks the same. Um, the blue lines basically denote the sort of uh, narrowing wedge pattern over the course of the past uh, almost decade at this point. And you can start to see that we're starting to really kind of get giddy to break uh, to the upside here. And we've already broken, broken out of the long term uh, wedge and, and my expectation would be that uh, the GLD uh, would work towards 140 so for gold that's roughly about 1400 1400 in, in dollar terms so I think there's plenty more upside here to come uh, that not necessarily today or tomorrow but through the lens of the next months and quarters all right well plenty of upside to come in terms of the gold in the commodity space how did the moves that we're seeing within the commodities complex though translate into moves for uh, the equity sector I'm thinking about the gold miners in particular is there an equity trade to be had there I do think there is one. It's, it is important to understand that the gold miners are a little bit more volatile or maybe a lot more volatile than, than gold uh, itself. Uh, but the chart really does more or less resemble the basic patterns of what, of what we're seeing, at least in the intermediate term in, in, in gold. I'm looking at the GDX. That's a popular gold miners ETF. Um, and you can see here we've kind of had like almost like sort of an inverse kind of bottoming pattern. Uh, and, and it looks like here to the price the, the path of least resistance will be will be to the upside maybe in this case of this ETF maybe into the high 20s again it, it's 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 you know when people allocate to, to gold there is always going to be some uh, at least side allocation to gold miners and even though the correlation may not be one there still is a positive correlation if gold really does move. All right, let's switch focus a bit now because I know you wanted to have a look at the chart of Apple, which closed higher by around uh, two and a third percent on Tuesday amid this broader rally that we saw across global equities. But let's remember that earlier in the week, Goldman Sachs warned that tech stocks looked overvalued. So, I mean, we know this stock has a high correlation with the developments that we see in the trade war. So taking your technical analysis perspective into account, what's the chart telling us about where next for Apple? Sure. I mean, you know, I thought Apple would be an interesting one to, to, to look at here. And it's really just because it, it really does resemble kind of the broader sort of feel that I see in, in, in the um, in the equity markets. I, you know, I speak to a lot of institutional investors every single day and I still see a sort of blindly buying the dip mentality, which I, which has ultimately has already been failing for the past year and a half in, in, in global equities. Um, and I think there's going to be, be more of that going forward. So if you look at Apple right now, I mean, this is a fairly long data chart goes all the way back to uh, you know 2008 2009 area and you can see that for the most part the trajectory to the upside has been taking place in a well-defined channel uh, you know two very simple lines will do that and I guess the question I have to ask yourself is even though we had a couple of you know breakout fake out moves here you know would you still like to buy Apple at the upper end of its long-term channel when at the best what you can hope for is a breakout fake out move so this is just more of like a cautionary note because it does kind of to me resemble what the broad stock market does which is not that um, uh, not that surprising considering Apple is a major part of the S&P or, or the, the, the technology holdings uh, sector and of course tech being a big part of the S&P in terms of its growth and and from a weighing perspective so Apple here to me not something I'd want to buy um, again, it's just historically speaking where we are, 
and it doesn't really make a heck of a lot of sense to buy it here for the time being. The middle or the lower end of that range, uh, you know, somewhere in around the 150s, 160s makes more sense, just statistically speaking. All right, so another market that arguably doesn't make that much sense, to me at least, is the S&P. Let's have a look more broadly at that index because there seems to be lots of nervousness towards the markets, yet prices continue to grind higher. So which way do you think we go from here? Yeah, so I mean, I think it's it's interesting. You know, there's a, you know, if you look at it from the lens of technical analysis, you know, you, triple tops are, and, and quadruple tops are things that rarely exist, and it's kind of where we are right now. So. In my perspective, we can certainly pop and make a, a, a fresh high here over the coming days, maybe a couple of weeks. Uh, but ultimately, the stamina isn't going to be there to, to stay at all-time highs. And uh, again, a lot of it has to do with the with the with the under with the with the, the major parts of this market. Again, we just touched on one of them being Apple. Um, I just literally don't think that the, the math is there um, for 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 an index like this to, to remain at at at, at new sustainable breakouts so again we can move higher maybe we go towards 3,000 that's an easy an easy target to get to um, but ultimately I think we're gonna get right back into, into the trading range and if I were to annotate this trading range very simply look something like this maybe 2600 on downside and maybe you know if we if we get lucky 3,000 on the upside so the trading range I think is gonna remain here for some time all right Serge thanks for your time as always thank you that was Serge Berger, head trader and investment strategist at thesteadytrader.com. I'm Victoria Scholar and thanks for watching IGTV.